Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Abhishek, and I lead the Escaban and Goblin team at LinkedIn. So I'm going to talk about the stream and batch data integration at LinkedIn and how it's powered by Goblin. So to start with, we'll briefly look at uh, what LinkedIn's data ecosystem looks like today and what are the key requirements that jump out of that ecosystem. Then we'll go over some of the features of Goblin of how Goblin addresses those key requirements. Then we'll talk about a couple of LinkedIn use cases and uh, what a smart data integration is and how Goblin helps you address that smart data integration use cases. Then a little bit about community and roadmap, and roadmap, and if time permits, uh, we'll go into a quick demo so that you can also get started with Goblin and try it out if you want to. So Lin LinkedIn's data ecosystem, like you would assume, um, starts with its members. So members interact with LinkedIn through the mobile app, the web application, the website that you open up. Then in terms of LinkedIn's data ecosystems users, along with the uh, members that are uh, general, the general public, uh, we have internal applications and internal uh, users as well of that data ecosystem. And most of these users interact with different services. So if you see the uh, LinkedIn feed or if you see some recommendation of job or people you may know, these are all services and products that uh, come together and show the whole experience to you. So these services are mostly the product teams and they interact with certain data stores, which is Espresso, MySQL, or Oracle. So all the primary data is written to that and read from it. So any profile changes or any kind of uh, uh, changes that you are doing in terms of sending messages and things like those goes back and through with those data stores. There is, ex there is external integration with lots of third party enterprises. All of that data also comes to uh, similar data stores. Then um, if we look at the other side, uh, we see there, are, there is derived data store, which is basically all the data that has been processed by different teams within LinkedIn, the relevance team, um, the uh, teams that are building some kind of product and have pre-crunched some kind of data and want to serve back to you. So um, an example would be people you may know, kind of recommendations that's generated based on who you had to the friend list and who your friends know, um, combining all of that data and figuring out some kind of recommendation to show back to you. So that's the derived data store and it's stored in terms of indexes for search or um, some kind of, uh, for OLAP kind of queries in Pino, or uh, it could be some kind of a graph data in graph database, or MySQL for simple kind of um, serving the services. So now, between the primary store and the derived store, we have the whole data analytics infrastructure, where um, the database itself is um, got onto the Hadoop for analytics in snapshots and incremental dumps. Also, the change uh, capture is run over Kafka and materialized onto Hadoop for, for the analytics. The services that you interact with or the other internal applications might interact with also generate tons of events. Like you clicked on someone's profile, so that's an event. If you clicked on ad, that's an event. So all of that data is generated and captured over Kafka and again brought over to Hadoop for analytics. All of this analytics is done, um, recommendations generated and written out to derived data store, and like we discussed, is served back to the users. Also, there is tons of activities, the housekeeping that goes on, like the data standardization or compliance or uh, compaction for better storage or reduce, uh, reducing the aggregation and things like those that happens on the Hadoop infrastructure itself. So this is the analytics infrastructure. And if you look at uh, this and see where Goblin comes into the picture in this whole infrastructure, it's basically this is slide where I've grayed out most of things that are non-Goblin specific, but are powered by Goblin. So getting data from the external sources onto the databases, uh, the CDCs that are obtained onto, uh, are brought onto the Kafka or the events that are generated over Kafka that are brought over to Hadoop for processing, or these snapshots, incremental dumps, uh, data standard compli uh, compliance, uh, compaction, then the data movement in stream or batch format to the derived data stores, all of it is powered by Goblin. So if you think about it, um, Goblin is kind of doing 
uh, not just ETL, but whole data management suite for streaming and batch data. Uh, there is Hadoop involved, but there is also some interaction with the external data sources where we don't have Hadoop, or maybe Hadoop doesn't make sense. So these are the key requirements that clearly jump out of it. Uh, we need some kind of connector diversity that, so that we can, uh, in Goblin, talk to multiple different uh, types of systems, multiple sources, multiple things. Um, Goblin should itself support multiple execution platforms, so it should be able to execute in an MR mode on Hadoop or as a cluster for certain uh, more mini batch kind of use cases on YARN. Uh, in cluster itself or for smaller use cases on simple JVM or as a library itself. Then Goblin should be able to support batch data as well as stream data. So it should be able to move stream to stream, a stream to batch, batch to stream, batch to batch, um, and process those data. So these are the key requirements. Um, so going forward, um, oh, before uh, we go much further ahead, uh, some quick stats about Goblin. So it ingests 300 billion events on a daily basis for all the uh, events that we're just talking about. Generally, uh, at uh, LinkedIn, we have one of the biggest Kafka deployment with more than so a few trillion uh, messages moving around, but 300 are captured specifically by Goblin, by the team that, uh, uh, by the core team. But there are other deployments of Goblin which capture much more and process that, um, much more than 300 billion. We ingest 200 terabytes of data on a daily basis uh, through Goblin, and uh, we have around 250 petabytes of data on Hadoop clusters, which Goblin cycles through for compliance, compaction, format management, um, data management and other activities. So we looked at LinkedIn's data ecosystem, the key requirements that jumped out of it. Now we'll, we will go briefly over different aspects of Goblin that makes it all possible. So the first one is pretty obvious, the connector, connector diversity. So Goblin connects with multiple different systems. Uh, this slide is not even the most recent one because it's continuously being, this ecosystem is continuously evolving. And ever since Goblin entered the incubation, it has even accelerated. So you will find the connector for use case. If you don't have, it's very easy to write one. Then uh, in terms of the multiple execution platforms uh, and the stream and batch data processing, we'll have to step back and look into the architecture of Goblin and how Goblin pipelines are spe specified to see how that magic happens. So the Goblin's logical pipeline on, uh, in a, on a high level looks something like this, where there is a source which creates work units or the partitions of the things that you want to do. Uh, those are executed in form of tasks, and those tasks can perform actions like extracting data, converting data, uh, performing quality checks, then writing out to the destination. And if there is some kind of exactly one semantics involved and your destination supports exactly one semantics, then uh, a data publisher can come into the picture. So let's look a bit more closely. So a work unit, like we said, was a unit of work. So it could be bounded, but not always. So when we say not always, it means a streaming. Um, Examples could be a Kafka topic where you have a logging, you have an event like logging event partition and an offset range is specified. Uh, it could be an HDFS folder and a file. It could be a hive data set where you have specified the DB name, table name, partition name, and that could be your work unit. The source is basically just a provider of work units. It's talked to the source from where the data has to be read and uh, partitions what the work has been determined into different manageable chunks. Um, that is the work units. <clears throat> then the task is basically the execution of that work unit. So basically reading the records from the source and moving it towards the destination. Um, a task can be executed in a thread pool if you are running in a JVM or as a library. It could be a mapper if you're running in MapReduce for bash to bash kind of workload, or it could be simply a worker if you're running Goblin in a cluster mode. So the first phase extractor basically just reads the record and deserializes the record from the source. The converter then comes in and converts the record based on what are conversion conversions you have specified, like it could be the format conversion, encryption, or schema projection. And it could generate n number of records from one records. You can split the records, or you can have just one-to-one -one mapping. Then the quality, uh, quality checker just uh, makes sure that your quality is up to, uh, to the mark. 
and uh, the quality uh, checkers can be at the row level or overall at the task level. You can quarantine, you can fail the job, or you can take remedial actions based on what you want. There are many which are inbuilt. You can also easily extend your own quality checkers. Then the writer basically just writes to a destination, so it could write in a sync or async fashion based on your use case. So examples are like file system writer or Kafka writer or Couchbase writer. The data publisher, basically, if your destination supports some kind of an exactly one semantic, um, it can publish your data so that you can just first write to the staging location. Then, then when all your tasks are completed, then you move your data from the staging location to the final location. So example would be some sort of a copy activity from one other cluster to another. So um, that was a uh, brief overview of the Goblin's logical pipelines architecture. Um, so you want to do this thing over and over again, and you want to resume from where you left off. So Goblin supports watermarks, um, so you can, uh, and that's saved in state store. So a state store, based on your use case uh, and your system, could be either an HDFS, S3, MySQL, Zookeeper. We have these implementations, and the interfaces are simple enough, so you can also extend it for the state store uh, that you want. So that was mostly the architecture. Let's look at how the specification looks like. So the specification, basically, we call it as a pull file. Uh, it is just a property file where you first specify your basic metadata of the pipeline, then your source and its configuration. Uh, for example, the source here is a Wikipedia source, and the other configuration is specific to a Wikipedia source, which can read from Wikipedia. Then you specify converter, uh, whatever conversions you want to perform on the data that has been deserialized from the source and read and being deserialized. And then the writer and the configuration specific to the writer. So here the example writer is basically um, file system writer and it's writing out on HDFS in an Abru format. And then if any publisher, uh, if you want to have one. So once you, uh, so we have seen the architecture of Goblin and we have seen the specification, which is basically not very specific to any execution platform. So essentially what that means is that Goblin in this architecture format, uh, this, with this logical kind of execution format and with, uh, with this specification can be taken up and executed anywhere. So Goblin supports standalone and single and embedded mode like uh, we talked about. So if you're a startup and you were just uh, getting started with some kind of data integration use cases. You're not sure if this product will be viable in long term, but you still want some solution that can scale up for the future, you can use Goblin. And you can write this specification with just a simple properties file and run in a single box. Or even if you're just running some kind of a very simple application, then you can use Goblin as a library and invoke it constructors and just build your pipeline and run it. Uh, once you start to scale up, you can basically run your use case um, with the same specification uh, in Goblin uh, on a cluster. So basically you will have a master and you have workers of Goblin. Uh, we'll go a bit more in deep about that a little later, uh, but uh, you can run that use case in a static cluster. But if you have a larger use case, if you are like super successful or if you are running or if you are uh, building up use cases for a company at a scale like LinkedIn, then you can run your workload on an elastic cluster like on AWS, Azure, or on Yarn, or if you um, have mostly like batch kind of use cases where you're just copying data and you don't really care about SLAs, then you can also run uh, things in as, as an MR, uh, Goblin as an MR application, use the same specification with, the, with that MR job. So it's pretty flexible in that way uh, that you can use the same specification and the same Goblin job and run on any kind of uh, 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 execution environment. Um, and the underlying infrastructure then can be anything. It could be bare metal, AWS, Azure, or VM. Goblin doesn't really cares about that. So we saw that how um, Goblin has connected diversity and uh, can run on multiple different systems. Um, sim the third requirement that came out of LinkedIn uh, ecosystem that we saw initially was uh, an ability to run uh, the job for stream and batch both at the same time. So let's quickly look at the execution model of how it changes for batch and stream modes. So we uh, had earlier seen this logical architecture and overview. Um, going back to the same thing again, if you look at the source and the work units, for the batch, thing, batch mode, um, Goblin determines the work. 
uh, and has some sort of boundary. So for Kafka topic, it could have uh, an offset range that from this offset to this offset um, uh, do a full job. For streaming, the same uh, work unit can be uh, determined but with no uh, offset range specified so that you have an unbounded work unit and you can just assign the work unit to some one of the workers and they can just pick up the work unit and start executing and uh, never stop. The task basically in the batch mode would acquire slots and run like in MapReduce, it would be mappers in the batch, it would be identifying certain workers which have capacity and leveraging that. Uh, in streaming, it would be identifying a worker which can host the work unit task uh, and execute that continuously. Um, in this mode, you would checkpoint periodically so that uh, you can resume if there is a failure or if there is any kind of rebalancing activity. Uh, and will shut down gracefully if required. So basically, uh, periodically we'll notify the work for, work, watermark manager that's um, within Goblin, which will basically uh, flow the control message through the pipeline and an acknowledgement will go back and it will be stored in the state, uh, state um, store, which is what we saw earlier as well. The data publisher in the case of batch uh, publishes something and uh, there is, it also does the checkpointing um, and it commits the data. In streaming, it does nothing because there is no concept of data publishing in the streaming mode. So basically, um, you can use the same Goblin specification, same Goblin execution deployment platforms and run either your stream to stream or stream to batch, batch to batch or batch to stream kind of workloads. And all you need to do to make that happen, to run things in the streaming mode is specify one property uh, in your Goblin deployment, which is, uh, or Goblin job, which is task.execution mode uh, is equal to streaming, and it works for all the different execution platforms. So um, let's look uh, quickly into a couple of LinkedIn use cases of um, how they look like and what mode of Goblin we use for them. So if you remember the first picture we saw, we have rest of the areas grayed out. Um, so basically, we are going to look into uh, getting data from external sources like um, external CRMs like Salesforce or Dynamics and writing them out into Espresso, which is uh, basically a database used within LinkedIn. Uh, and then getting data from Kafka and writing data out to Hadoop. So CRM to Espresso, the external source to Espresso, basically um, we use Goblin for supporting different enterprise integrations. And uh, so if you use um, recruiter platform or the sales navigator and things like those, you are basically an enterprise customer. So if you're onboarding with uh, LinkedIn and you're trying to use LinkedIn, um, you might have different config and different binaries specific to you because you're an enterprise customer uh, and might have very unique use case and so are our thousands of enterprise customers. So there is always a, a different job for a different enterprise customers and uh, there's a different binary and config. So, and enterprise customers' uh, data is tied to a very strict SLA and um, uh, is always incremental and continuously flowing. So it's basically uh, thousands of mini bad jobs. So, it, and it requires low latency. So it's not very suitable for MapReduce and it's kind of always running. Uh, so kind of streaming, but not really streaming. Um, just a stream of mini, batch, mini, mini batches. Uh, so that's the first use case. The second is Kafka to HDFS, where basically it's very internal use case where we are getting data from Kafka, uh, Kafka to HDFS. So it's the same binary for all the Kafka topics and uh, that we are ingesting and the same config. Uh, it's common job for LinkedIn infrastructure, so we can exploit those properties to optimize things and have better resource utilization. Higher latency is generally acceptable for uh, this kind of workload because the downstream it mostly analytics workload which don't have very strict SLA uh, to be delivered. So looking at CRM to Espresso, uh, we, uh, we use basically Goblin cluster where we continuously schedule and execute jobs. Um, the LinkedIn service, with wherever the enterprise customer is onboarding talks to Goblin service. We'll briefly look at Goblin service a little later. Uh, but that triggers a job to Goblin cluster and the master takes that job, runs the CRM source 
to determine the work units, which basically uses Helix to distribute the tasks between workers. So Helix is a cluster management framework which uh, also supports um, a sort of task management. So it distributes the task between workers. If worker fails, then it re uh, reassigns the task or rebalances the task. The workers read the data from external source and write out to the uh, sink, which is basically Espresso here. Um, the second use case, which is Kafka to HDFS, uh, we schedule that job on Azkaban, which again runs a source. Um, it should not be CRM, so it should be Kafka source, but um, it reads from Kafka and creates the uh, MR job by uh, doing a bin packing of uh, different uh, uh, Kafka part uh, ev uh, events and partitions based on how much it has to pull from different Kafka topics and distributes that between different mappers, and the mappers basically read from Kafka and out, read, uh, write out to HDFS. So that was a couple of LinkedIn use cases. Um, so the, for the first one, we use Goblin cluster, and the other is uh, the MR job. So uh, the first was, could have been MR, job, uh, MR jobs as well if we didn't have uh, higher SLA requirements. Um, but since we have higher SLA requirements, and are leaning more to a streaming, we use Goblin Cluster. The second one, we use uh, MR uh, jobs. Uh, let's look at what more can be done if we have uh, a standard way of uh, moving data and managing data, which can run on multiple different platforms. Uh, let's look at what would be a smart data integration and what would it look like. So if you have a pipeline where you're getting data from external sources through Goblin Cluster onto HDFS, doing, generating some sort of recommendation, moving that recommendation to a derived data store to serve back, um, what would you want more? You would want some sort of an, uh, disaster recovery, and ideally that should be an automated disaster recovery so that um, your business continues even if there is some kind of uh, bad event in one of your deployments, either in cluster, Goblin Cluster or in Hadoop. So basically, your workload should rebalance if the Hadoop cluster goes down or if the Goblin cluster goes down. You should have a smarter distribution of workload. If your one Hadoop cluster is overloaded, the, your recommendation job should just move to the other Hadoop cluster. Or if your one Goblin cluster is overloaded, then your uh, ingestion job should move to other Goblin cluster. You should have an easier way of onboarding. So. Um, not every time any product team should be running, going running to a SRE team to help them on board and set up all the infrastructure to get, uh, to make things happen. Um, there should be some mechanism where you should be able to come and do some kind of self-serve. Uh, so that, should, that means that you need to have some kind of a, uh, support where you have uh, some set of templates and some kind of um, resourcing and those things um, done where it makes it easier for people to onboard. And extending on the same logic, um, you should be able to make it even more simpler. Like if you have data scientists in-house and they want to make some use case happen, they should be able to specify in a very logical way that they want this and that should, in the, uh, and that should be converted into physical jobs and the pipelines that would make that happen. So an example would be a data scientist must, might say that uh, uh, get me jobs data from Oracle and generate recommendations and after that export that to Venice. Uh, so Venice is basically a uh, distributed uh, key value store at LinkedIn. Um, so you should, you should hopefully have an ability where you can take this logical specification and figure out what kind of ex uh, different executors or different deployments of data processing systems you have within your ecosystem and break it down into a set of jobs that can make that happen. Uh, so we have something like that, which is we call Goblin Service. It's part of the Goblin ecosystem, but not very specifically tied to Goblin. What it does is basically, uh, given a logical specification, so today logical specification is not very NLP, it might get there, but it takes a logical specification of what needs to be done, uh, that is a logical flow, and breaks it down into the physical jobs that can make that specification happen every time it executes. Um, so basically, for getting data from Oracle onto Hadoop and processing, generating some recommendations, moving to Venice, it knows that it has to set up three jobs. So it will set up three jobs for you. Uh, in case of some kind of disaster, it would automatically rebalance the job because it knows about your ecosystem and knows when something goes down uh, and would rebalance things uh, also for the uh, load. So you get the disaster recovery for free. You get an easier way to uh, specify the pipelines and all the smartness that you really need. 
Uh, so once you have this kind of um, a system, what else can you build on top of it? So you can basically also add other kind of ancillary uh, things to this, like we have got global throttling, which is also part of the uh, Goblin ecosystem, but again, you can use this outside of Goblin directly, uh, where it uh, controls the uh, amount your, or throttles your traffic out to certain kind of data, uh, data sinks or data, or, uh, to the data's um, sources so that you don't overwhelm uh, your resources uh, and manages that centrally so it can work with Goblin service to uh, throttle the amount of writes uh, you are getting on your Espresso for different Hadoop clusters, which otherwise would have been really hard to uh, achieve. So it distributes the permits and man uh, controls of how many permits have been consumed. Uh, what else? So the other thing is that you can also very easily uh, figure out the data lineage. Basically, all the Goblin jobs or everything uh, that's executing in your ecosystem uh, emits lineage events. So Goblin has Goblin metrics. Again, that's part of the Goblin ecosystem but can be used outside of Goblin. Uh, we are actually, within LinkedIn, using it with systems with, which are not very Goblin-specific. Uh, they emit um, uh, meta lineage, lineage events and other lineage events that are consumed by warehouse. Warehouse is, again, open source. Uh, and displayed uh, in form of lineage so that you can explore where your data is, has it, has it been uh, consumed from the source, um, has it been processed by the recommendation job, has it reached its destination, what partitions are where, and uh, so on. So uh, you can have the whole uh, control over your ecosystem as well as a visibil uh, visibility in your ecosystem and build the smartness in your ecosystem using Goblin. So, um, in terms of the community and roadmap of Goblin, um, it's very actively being used by tons of companies. Uh, we don't have many names here because uh, it's hard to get everyone to allow to list their names. Uh, it's, uh, the, it's, it's, it's uh, very actively under development and it's going through Apache uh, incuba incubation. And uh, we have uh, uh, frequent meetup and conference talks around Goblin. Um, we have video, monthly video conference, uh, so you can dial in if you're interested and ask questions. We are also active on Gitter, um, as well as uh, the mailing list. Uh, so it's a very healthy community if you want to get engaged and if you want to try out Goblin. In terms of a roadmap, we are working towards our Apache graduation. Um, Spark integration is on the roadmap so that you can just take Goblin and run it as a Spark job on Spark so that you get all the free connectors, state management, uh, everything that comes with uh, Goblin. Uh, we are working towards uh, adding support for Azure so that you can run Goblin in the cluster mode on Azure. Uh, Mesos support so that you can take in Goblin and run as a cluster on Mesos. Uh, we are working towards Goblin service uh, general availability because it's mostly um, in development phase a few of the key features around that. Uh, improved integration with Askaban as well as Airflow, uh, and then adding certain sub, some uh, type of job priorities in Goblin cluster, which it doesn't have today. So let's uh, get into a quick demo, and uh, then I'll take questions. So if you want to try it Goblin, you can go to gob HTTPS goblin.io. And you can log in through Google. I have my own login, so I'll just use that. So uh, once you get inside, it's basically an Azkaban interface which you use at LinkedIn. Uh, and it's a distributed workflow manager that we use at LinkedIn to host all kind of jobs, not just Goblin. But uh, I'm going to show you how you can use Goblin with Azkaban. So first, you will create a project. So I'll create a project called Crunch. So once you have a project, uh, you can create as many workflows as you want. So I'm just going to create one workflow and call it my flow. And within workflow, you uh, can have a DAG of jobs. So the, uh, it currently has nothing. So I'll just create a job. So I'll click on Studio Goblin. So first, you select your source. Um, so I'm going to select Wikipedia source. And then you see all the properties that you can specify in your specification. I'm going to leave all of it as default. Maybe just change the job name to Wikipedia one. And these are the number of destinations. So Goblin also has four, so you can write it out to multiple destinations if you want to. 
then you can select the destination of where you want to write out. I'll just select console, uh, select other properties and what this job depends on in your workflow and hit submit. Uh, so now you have one job just for creating a better DAG. I'll just create another job and select a distant, different destination, select this. It will be a very linear, um, it's a very linear DAG right now. Let me just create one more because it doesn't take much time. So this is Wikipedia 3. And this time, again, I'm going to use this destination, depend on this. So I have a simple star created. So if I were to look at my workflow, it's, um, it looks like this. And now I can ex schedule or execute it. So I'm going to simply execute this. So it has start execution, one is done, other is middle job is running, once that's done, the other two will get triggered. So all of the jobs are completed now and you can go and look at the execution logs of what happened. And uh, this is console, so you'll probably have uh, the records read and written here from the Wikipedia. So. Using Azkaban, you can also schedule and um, set up conditionals and triggers and all kind of uh, other add-on features. You'll eventually also have Goblin service support into this. Um, right now, Goblin.io is just for uh, playing up as a playground for you. If you want to try out more sources and more things, um, ping me and I will enable that for you to try it out. Um, at least you'll be able to generate the specification and take it and run it Goblin in-house with that specification if you don't want to run things on Goblin.io. Um, that's mostly it. I think I can take up any questions now. Oh, and these are the sources if you want to try out more about Goblin. And these are the, uh, the first, is, first two are the Goblin's uh, Apache website and the Goblin.io just showed you. Um, the Goblin mailing list, you can also mail me. So. Questions? Thank you so much. We have a couple of questions indeed. So, how does Goblin compare to Apache Oops, NIFI, or the more established Apache Camel, two other tools usually used for EIP? So uh, Apache and IFI and Goblin take very interesting approaches. Apache and IFI comes from uh, an approach where uh, there is a data flow of some sort and it then boils down into different, or it has evolved into building more core components. Goblin started with building uh, one very basic uh, dumb system where you, there is a source, there is a destination, or there are des number of destinations, and got that right, and then uh, and uh, it also matured its state management. And then it took over the uh, prospect of having a workflow over on top of it using Azkaban initially and now Goblin service where it, you can have a very smart uh, workflow and you can just go from logical to uh, physical, which isn't with NiFi. Uh, but they are very similar and, and a very similar space. Uh, there has also been uh, chat with uh, some of the NiFi folks over some kind of uh, collaboration or sharing the connectors. Uh, so that would be pretty interesting. Uh, Apache Camel, I have not tried so much, but from what I know, I think it deals more with in terms of integrations, but doesn't support all the other features that are required. Uh, also, I want to call out about Goblin, which I think NiFi probably doesn't has, is that Goblin supports multiple different execution modes, like I discussed about the um, standalone embedded library or cluster or the MR mode, um, as well as stream and bash data or the hybrid of two. So you can use Goblin in a very, very flexible way, which most of other systems don't support. Okay. How are tasks tested before production, test development environment, test data sample, et cetera? So at LinkedIn, we have a staging environment where we test most of our pipelines. And, uh, uh, it's, and then we move on to dark launch where basically we uh, ingest and process and manage data in a very uh, production-like environment, but not really affecting the production-derived data systems. 
And once we are happy with uh, the output and uh, we have different auditing systems which uh, and data quality uh, frameworks that actually measure the data quality, once we are satisfied with that, we move forward with the production deployments. Okay. What tool do you use to draw diagram? It looks nice. You should use Azkaban. That was Azkaban. Uh, it's a distributed workflow manager. Um, the awesome thing about that is it's pretty easy to get it started. So you can use, if you go to Azkaban's, uh, Azkaban is fully open source. You can go to Azkaban, get it, and get started in five minutes. It's as easy. And uh, otherwise, you can try out on goblin.io. It's already deployed for you to try out. Cool. How many Kafka clusters you have? How many and how powerful brokers are used in Kafka clusters? I actually don't have much information about Kafka clusters, so I might uh, mostly give you misinformation, so I'll skip that. Uh, how Goblin allows streams or batches synchronization? How can I make sure that data for previous day are completed in all the streams? So basically, um, we have watermarks. Um, so for the batch, after the uh, job has published, we update the watermark. So the next time the job runs, it uh, carries on from that uh, particular watermark. And uh, all the state associated with that is, uh, is also persisted back in the state store along with the work units for any kind of action that you want to take uh, on that. For the streams, uh, the persistence happens uh, during the task execution itself. Periodically, the checkpoints are saved back to the state store. Uh, how can I make sure the data for previous day are completed? So basically, um, if you are using Azkaban, you can see that uh, if your jobs have finished, and you generally the log files also show the um, uh, watermarks that were picked up and executed. Goblin also emits the metrics. So the metrics that go to Lineage, uh, we also use the same metrics for other internal systems like in graphs where we track uh, of what has happened. So Goblin emits events where it uh, says the watermarks that were picked up for a particular data set and processed. So you can just uh, listen to those Kafka events and make sure that uh, you have actually processed previous day. Uh, and if not, you can also uh, go back and do backfills. Uh, so each of the Goblin uh, connectors support some sort of backfill. All right, maybe a couple of last questions. How can you integrate Goblin with Airflow? Can you show us an example? So uh, we don't have a Goblin running with Airflow, but uh, there is a plan to try it out with Airflow. Uh, I think the investment with Azkaban is uh, more natural with us because both, uh, although both are open source, uh, we have teams uh, closely working together within LinkedIn on both. Uh, hopefully we'll have something on Airflow and uh, we would love to collaborate with the Airflow community to get that going. All right. Is Apache Goblin supported on the Google Cloud platform as well as for Amazon? Um, not yet. Uh, it's for AWS and Azure is up and coming. Um, hopefully someone from community picks up GCP and um, also builds out an indication for that, but not at the moment. All right. And let's take the last one. Will the Spark integration also support Spark streaming? Yeah, that's the plan, uh, but we will see how it evolves. That was fast. Okay, maybe one last one. What's the relation of Goblin to Kafka? Does is use Kafka internally or the like? So uh, they are kind of complementary technologies. Kafka is mostly um, your um, streams and the events that are happening, and you move things around uh, using that. Um, Goblin is mostly data integration and data management uh, system. Uh, so it won't uh, cache the events that are being generated for you. So um, you can use Goblin with Kafka or without Kafka, uh, but they are not very much alike. We use both internally at LinkedIn. All right. Are you tired already? No, not really. Shall I was running through the questions already. You can, I can okay. answer more. <laughs> All right. Then no more questions. Let's answer these last two. Can you comment on Airflow integration feature overlap with DAGs and where Goblin excels? So uh, Goblin is mostly one edge in the uh, DAG. Uh, Goblin service uh, takes the logical representation, generates DAG out of it. Now once the DAG is generated, it could be executed via uh, Goblin and service itself. So it all, it's, all, it's already is building basic DAG execution support. 
Uh, we would also be exploring t uh, taking that and executing it through Azkaban, and if we can execute through Azkaban, since Airflow is also in the similar space workflow um, and uh, execution system, we can take the same dApp and execute with the workflow. So uh, there is overlap, there is leverage possibilities, and it, we would love to leverage more of Airflow to run the DAC through Airflow. Okay, the last one. Yarn deployment and continuous mode are experimental for years. Will they be production ready sometime? Seems like someone has been using Goblin for a long time here. Uh, that's true. Uh, initially, Yarn was mostly um, in experimental phase, uh, but before it could take off, AWS mode t uh, took off much more aggressively, I guess because most of the companies love AWS and have been using that, uh, and I guess more of Azure. Uh, going forward because now we are Microsoft. Uh, but I think Yarn is again picking up. There are more people trying out Yarn. Uh, it, it's maturing much more because the uh, common uh, framework for Yarn or AWS is the Goblin cluster, which is Goblin cluster on bare metal. And if you improve that, you naturally improve the uh, Goblin Yarn and the Goblin AWS or Goblin Azure mode. Uh, so it's much more stable. We have worked a ton on stabilization and scalability and robustness at the scale. Uh, so you should be able to use the YARN mode much more easily and uh, in a non-experimental mode going forward. Oof, that was a lot of questions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.